Anime Studio Pro was initially designed to be a two-dimensional modeling and animation application that is layer and timeline based. The layer panel displays the layer name, the vector based icon, and the visibility icon. Click this arrow to rename the layer. Click the apply button, then click anywhere in the panel header. Normally, Frame 0 is highlighted and is the frame that we do our initial drawing and modeling. In its simplified form, the style panel contains two default colors, one for the fill color and one for the line color. It also contains a default line thickness field. These default style settings will automatically be applied to anything that you draw with vector tools. From the Tools panel, select the Shape tool and the Oval option. The oval is automatically drawn with the default style settings. Zoom in and out of the composition with your mouse scroll wheel. Click and drag with the right mouse button to pan the view. At any time, we can change our default style settings. To change the transparency settings of either fill or line color, click anywhere in the transparency bar. Anime Studio Pro also has an extensive set of vector-based brushes. Click the No Brush icon and select a brush as shown. The style panel now displays the brush style for the line stroke. To apply this newly defined style, choose the Bucket tool and click inside your vector shape. Select the Transform tool from the Tool panel and click on the vector shape. You'll see that there are four control points. To add more control points, select the Add Point tool from the Tool panel. Click anywhere on the vector outline to add a point. Select the Transform tool again and drag on some control points to see how they behave. Make a note that any control point can be manipulated by clicking and dragging somewhere near that point. When we zoom into the composition, the preview shows a very good indication of the shape stroke and fill. A very accurate rendering preview can be obtained from the File menu and the Preview option. Currently in the Mac version, the application will crash when trying to render with the screen maximized. Previewing when in the normal view avoids this problem. Sophisticated shape styles can be quickly applied by checking Advanced in the Style panel. In this case, let's create and apply a 3D shadow effect to our object. First, set the Ordinary Fill Color. Follow this by setting the Stroke Color. Let's also select a Custom Stroke Style. Just below the fill color, select the plane drop down and choose shaded. Adjust the light angle of the shading. Click OK to finalize this setting. To apply this new default object style, click the bucket tool in the fill panel and click inside your vector shape. The preview of this applied style looks very good in the viewport. Press Ctrl-R or Command-R to preview the render. Let's begin animating the ball by selecting frame 0 in the timeline. After selecting it, copy it to the clipboard with Ctrl-C. It's also safe practice to paste this into frame 1 because the animation itself begins on frame 1. Click and drag the time slider in the timeline and position it over frame 24. Choose the Transform tool from the Tool panel and let's set up some onion skins. 
Click this drop down and choose 2. Activate the onion skins by clicking the onion skin icon, then click this drop down and uncheck outlines only. Click anywhere in the header to dismiss this dialog. Drag the first onion skin indicator to the left and position it over frame 1. Drag the second indicator and position it somewhere in the middle. Avoid transforming the whole object by clicking off of the object first and then clicking and dragging on a control point. Drag each control point to approximate a triangular shape. From the Tool panel, select the Curvature tool, drag each control point to the left to create a pointed cusp. Select the Transform tool again to finish the triangular shape. In the Timeline panel, drag the Playback slider to see the animation in action. Note the disturbing shape anomaly on frame 0. We will fix that. Drag the time slider to the right and position it over frame 48. Using the Transform tool, create now a square shape. Select the Curvature tool from the Tool panel and drag the cusps as shown. Finish the square by using the Transform tool. Create a playback looping point in the timeline by holding down the Alt key and right-clicking on frame 72. Click the Return to Beginning button in the timeline, and once on frame 0, press Ctrl V to paste our original shape. Pressing the Play button in the timeline will automatically loop the animation at frame 72.